Hey everybody, welcome back to the Scott Spot. I'm Scott and you're watching The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. So in this last episode we finally arrived at the private oasis that uh, Link received from Mrs. Marie. And I figured I'd take, just take a moment to uh, chillax. You know, Link needs a break every now and then. He even got himself a nice uh, little martini plant thing here, whatever that is. But anyway, heroes can never rest for long, so let's move on, shall we? Man, this place is pretty. Alright, so let's uh, head on inside. Don't touch me with those filthy hands, you mischievous little scamp. Yeah, I have no idea how this door is talking. <clears throat> this cabana belongs to the master, and the master alone. You grimy, trespassing little scoundrel. Away with you. Away, I say. Well, that was rude. Oh, man, this, this butler door is a rude ass. So, we're going to have to show him our uh, deed. Cabana deed. This seems to be the deed to a resort cabana on a far-off island. It's written on yellowed parchment and looks quite old, like Mrs. Murray. What do you have to say to this? Ew! Unclean! Most foul! Don't lay those grungy hands! Wait! The... the... that's... Where that's the... Are you... Are you the new master? Are you Master Link? What do you think? Ah, oh, I am so pleased to hear that name. Master Link, please be gentle on this fine door. Heart. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> I guess we gotta shake hands to enter. Oh, this place is nice. Got a pot? Got a bathtub? Oh, wow. This is vanity. <laughs> We've got maid butler. Uh, another butler cut out. We've got fireplace. Wow. They really outdid themselves this time. Okay. Um, so, the main thing that we can do here for now is you might notice there is a tiled picture here. And on the opposite side is another tiled picture. Only it's jumbled up. Ah, Master! Do you have an interest in the amusements of nobility? I do indeed. Well, in that case, would you care to hear an explanation of the game? Indeed I would. So basically, we've all seen these puzzles before. you got to slide them around until they uh, just fit. And unless you know the trick, this can be really tricky. I will place the final panel in the top right space to complete the painting. Oh, and Master, please bear in mind that this game is for amusement only. If you are successful, all I can offer as a reward is money. Do remember that. Do you understand the game? Most certainly. Very good, Master. Please enjoy yourself. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's do this. Don't, uh, don't ask me why there are paintings of random characters such as Joel in this, uh, game, but anyway, there's 16 puzzles like this, and for 100% we got to complete them all. So the first trick is to um, get the bottom left space in there. And then, uh, um, let me, ah, all of a sudden I've become painfully aware of my ex existence as a door. Wah, wah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I just want to make sure, uh, was familiar with all the pieces. Okay, so the top left and the top right are the only pieces that don't have a, anything of Joel's body on there. Alright, so let's do this. Uh, I don't need to hear an explanation. Alright, we got that goes there. And then no this. Alright, so those three that I've got so far are what you want to get first. And then you move that there. Okay, so we're doing good. Next we want to get the top left 
and below that should be this piece, I think. Right? Um, no. Wait. No. It's this piece we're looking for. Uh, the one with the left side of the top of Joel's head in it. Alright, so now what we want to do is move this around in such a way There we go. Wait, no. How do you do this? <laughs> um. There we go. Okay, so we got that piece. And now we need this piece down here, the one at the left top of Joel's head. All right, so we got that. Uh, we got the left side of the board, and now we want to focus on the bottom right. I mean, the bottom left. So let's move this down here. Basically, we're repeating the same strategy. All right, that worked itself out. So now we need there, and then you just rotate them until they fit into place. I'll post a link to a nifty guide that helps with this in the description. Well done, Master. Well done indeed. You are among the most talented gamesmiths of the noble classes. I offer you this as an expression of my respect and admiration of your skills. Please accept it. Yeah, so he gives you a bunch of rupees, but it totals out to be 50. <laughs> Use it wisely, Art. I can't handle this butler. I wish he had a name so I could call him some, from something other than the uh, butler. He doesn't have a Nintendo gallery picture, though, I will tell you that. But, so, like I said, there's when you finish a puzzle, the uh, the light lights up like that. So we have to get all 16 lit, so, for completion, uh, completion's sake. So let's leave and re-enter. And the next puzzle is... Kaka, motherfuckers. That's the last one. I offer you this as an expression of my respect and admiration of your skills. Please accept it. So many rupees. Yeah, so for the last one, he gives you 200 rupees. But you cannot complain about that. Use it wisely. Oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, so that's all 16. And I'm going to save. Because you never know what's going to happen. I'm not sure what happens once you leave and come back after completing all 16. Because I think it might reset itself, unfortunately. Alright, so I guess uh, you can get just do this endlessly. So, on my off time, I'm going to have to redo the, all 15 of those uh, just to show the fact that I can do it. Or I did do them. And while we're here, uh, let's smash these, shall we? Can I even use the boomerang in here, first of all? Nope. So let's get these. So yeah, as you can see, there's all kinds of rupees. I wish I could count them. And a blue one. Got... One, two, three, four, five, fifteen. Yeah, there's no point in even counting those. Fortunately, you can't. This doesn't work every time. I hate when the red or purple ones get stuck up there, though. There's even some purple ones up there. Wait, what if I... Okay. So, really, that's all that we can do at the uh, private oasis for now. Uh... Really, I have no idea where the time stands for this video, uh, so yeah, let's, I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna try to finish this uh, freaking column on the C-chart, 
and then call it a video. But we'll see how that goes. Alright, King. Let's get out of here. If you don't mind. And if you do mind, then I don't care. Yeah, sorry if my commentary starts to get kind of blah. Um, I'm trying to get all these videos recorded and I'm getting tired now, unfortunately. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's see. Make sure we're going the right way, first of all. Let's, uh... Where's the island here? Oh, here we go. See that bluish glow off in the distance? That's where we're headed. We've already heard about this island a couple times from Fishman, but this is Ice Ring Isle, as you may have imagined. Oh, it's beautiful. So you can't get too close to this island without freezing your ass off. But let's see what Fishman has to say about it. He's lucky he's not a frozen fish in a Link Cuisine meal. Ice Ring Isle. It's so called because it's a ring of ice. There's this amazing treasure inside that freezing ring of ice over there. Even if you wanted it and tried to get inside, you'd just be frozen solid as soon as you approached the shore. But if you go four squares north and three squares west, you'll find the power to melt any ice, no matter how cold. Search for it, small fry. But, unfortunately, you don't have the means to uh, get where it's talking about. Inside the Mother Isle. So what happens if I sail too close? It won't even let me, uh... If I climb onto this island... I'm <laughs> frozen solid. Wow, that's Im impressive. I'm not sure if I took damage there or not. But anyway, uh... There should... We do have the uh, treasure chart to this one, and it should be treasure chart 17. This one came from um, winning the barrel shoot minigame at Spectacle Island twice. Alright. Am I even on the map here? Oh, I'm close. Should be getting close. Ah, good. I thought one might be a little bit off, but... I guess, uh, I still got my touch. Okay, so, now what? Silver rupee. Nice. Not that I needed it. And that's all we can do here for now. Now we're off to sector F7. Quit more bait, because I'm going to need it. Okay, uh, that way. Yeah, I wish I had, I can't believe I'm missing thing a while. I wish I had found a way to, uh, keep track, I need a stopwatch really, is what I really need. I wish I had found a way to keep track of, uh, how much time I spent that actually, that kind of actually did the video since I, it took like over an hour to record all those. Oh, this place is swarming with guy orgs, I guess. Fishman, where are you? Oh, there he is. Fishman, send me from the sharks. I'm gonna leave the sharks to you, okay? I'm sure he's fine with that. These are the Angular Isles so-called because they're uh, pretty angular. They're actually just stacks of uh, blocks rising up out of the ocean, for lack of a better term. Draw on that chart, fish man. Northeast of here is the Forest Haven. They say a truly unique kind of fireflies indigenous to that place. You heard of it, small fry? It emits bursts of light in seven colors. Supposedly, it's as beautiful as the rainbow. If you want to capture one, though, you'd best have a bottle to keep it in. A little surprised they didn't. They still kept the tip about the forest firefly in there, considering it's only uses to trade for boyfriends now. But oh well, what are you gonna do? Okay, so we have um, a chart for this island as well. 
which is treasure chart 15. And we got this one from the Forbidden Woods. Dungeon. Closer. Cruise just a little bit. Oh god. This could be dangerous. There's the guy work. Okay, I'm just not gonna worry about the guy work. You got a piece of heart. That's the fourth piece, completing another heart container. Your life energy is increased by one heart. So yeah, that was piece of heart number 20, which also completed our tenth heart container. So we now have half of all the heart containers. Which isn't saying much, considering we started with three. But wait, there's more. Uh, let's climb on up here. We can actually get another treasure by finding our way to the top of this daggum island. Actually, I like this island. I don't know why. Seems a can't. I don't know if I would consider it creative or like very. Oh shit! Or very uncreative. Well, now I gotta climb back up there. Swim all the way around. Hopefully, I don't get attacked by guy orcs. I seem to be relenting for now. Just let me climb up, dude. Come on now. So, only some of these are movable, in case you haven't figured that out. Although that may have made for a better puzzle if they had made all of them movable. Or maybe an easier puzzle. Hmm, I'm not sure. Luckily we don't need any items to solve this particular puzzle. But yeah, you just need to move the blocks until you can make your way to the top of the island. It's pretty simple. Nothing really too hard about it. And our reward... is... Yet another piece of heart. This one is number 21. And... Oh shit. Don't knock me off. Don't knock me off. Oh, that was close. Blue chili jelly number 21. Wait, 21. 14. This piece of heart number 21 that we just got. Okay, um... Uh, you know, why don't we just do one more island? I think that the video time could probably use it. Off in this direction, I believe. And we got the guy who's following us again, of course. Of course, they don't seem very interested in me at the moment. Yes, they did lose interest. All right, fish man. Let's find your. Uh... Here, there you are. amazing. I'm still getting used to how fast a swift sail is. It's like, when you see something, you're going to be up on it quick. If you, like, see something off in the distance, for example, a fish man jumping in and out of the water. Okay. This is a unique island. Boating course. Home to the boating course minigame. Let me ask you something, Fry. Haven't you used the ZR button to make your boat jump? Well, have you? Of course, going out to sea just to jump around would be real dumb if you ask me. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. Anyway, what you can do is uh, tilt the control stick to move your tiller just as you land. That's how you make a sharp turn. If you didn't know that, why don't you test it out? And it's fitting enough that he tells us about this uh, jumping tactic at this island because it will be useful. Let's go over here. Now, the person who runs this island is actually we met him in a, a couple videos ago yep it's loot uh, I don't know why he's here at night I thought it got closed at night but what do I know let me delete the this pictograph that we don't need this one oops I just pressed the tingle bottle button that's not right erase let's take a pictograph that's loot. First of all, let me destroy these barrels because I don't know what's in them and it's going to bother me until I know. Unfortunately. Oh crap. Smooth spot. Real smooth. 
How does that even happen? Swim around to the other side of the island. Let's try this again. Hey, there's a tingle bottle out there. And there's absolutely nothing in there. Alright, before we... Actually, let's go ahead and talk to him. Hey, that's a pretty slick boat you got there, kiddo. So what do you say, kiddo? You want to play a boat game for 30 rupees? What do you say? Tell me the rules, jackass. He's not a jackass, I don't know why I said that. Well, I ain't that good a talker. But here goes. Now listen up. The deal is, you take your boat and sail over the barrels floating in the water and see how many rupees you can bring to the finish line within the time limit. There's two kinds of floating barrels you gotta watch out for. The ones that float on their sides and the ones that float upright. You can get the rupees above the barrels floating on their sides by just settling right over the barrels. But if you run into the barrels floating upright in the water, they'll rough you up. You know you can press ZR to jump your boat, right? Yeah, well, to get the rupees over the upright barrels, you gotta jump. It's the only way. The barrels get placed out there based on which way the wind's blowing. So watch that wind gauge behind your boat real careful-like. You can only use your regular cell in the race. None of them fancy speed cells, you hear? Ah, so it does take the sweat cell into account. Oh, and one more thing. The time runs out before you finish, you lose. So watch the timer too, will you? Them's the rules. What do you say? Want to give it a shot? Oh, why not? Alrighty, then go down to the start line. Let's see how this goes. This is our first Great Sea minigame. Okay, this could go either very good or very bad. So you can win up to 150 rupees this way. So we'll see how it goes. I like the music it uses here though. It's like the even more uh, special version of the Great Sea theme. Oh, are you kidding me? So close. Uh, get back in my boat. I guess you can't land on it. You have to jump completely over it. Well, now I'm not gonna get it perfect. So yeah, the perfect score is 150 rupees. If you haven't figured that out yet. Oh, that was good. Except for the exploding barrels, of course. It actually doesn't seem like it would be too hard if you knew what you were doing. Just at the moment, I don't really. Oh, that was close. 85 rupees, I'm doing okay, I guess. Seems like I got plenty of time. Gotta make the turns in advance. You stay away, you explosive barrel. Ah, oh, come on now. What was I supposed to do there? So I'm back to my boat. Ah, oh, it seems like it gives you plenty of time. Or maybe that's just me. Unless there's like some kind of bonus I, I've forgotten about. Nice. 49, 150. Alright, so what's the catch? Oh, way to be. Alrighty then, here's the 150 rupees you collected, as I promised. They're all yours. Enjoy, kiddo. Looks like you made a fortune. Come back and do it again sometime. So this is not a, a half bad way to uh, make some quick rupees. Um... But we're not done with this island yet because we can need to get to that other Illed over there. Why you ask? Well, there's a couple things over there. North. Get my Deku leaf out so I can fly over there. That's so fun. I wish there was more chances to do it for a longer period of time in the game. Yeah, there's a secret cave there, but before we get too carried away with that, we have yet another blue choo-choo on this rock here. And that one is blue choo jelly number 15. Wow, not many left. Into the secret cave. Secret cave number three. Okay, so the trick here is you have to 
trigger all the crystal switches. But, you're being hounded by many guns all the time, so not the easiest thing to do. That. that wasn't so bad. Oh, get out of here. Oh, shit. Kill him. No fair, I don't have a pitch for it. Okay. I wonder if this is in Ow. Luckily, their attacks don't do a lot of damage. I really want to know if this is in so. Ah! Get out of here! Jeez, how many more? Alright, I'm just opening the damn chest. What's inside? Well, you'll find out. Is that an upside down mini over there? Uh, we got a submarine chart. Now you know where to find the enemy submarines that surface from below. So yeah, there's charts in the game that show you like where the individual things, uh, special things in on the Great Sea are. Like there's a chart that shows you where great fairies are, and a chart that shows you where um, big octos are. But there's a submarine chart, and we've already been to uh, five of the seven. I was thinking there was only six, I guess there's seven. I guess I'll have to edit the videos to tell me that. But these guys are kicking my ass, so I'm just gonna get out of here, because it doesn't look like they have an end. If they do have an end, and you know that they do, let me know in the comments. Because I would like to know myself. Alright. So there's the boating force. I mean, that's pretty much it for this island. I don't know that we'll ever be back unless we need... I decide this is the, the quickest way to make some rupees. Alright, so... I said that this would be the last island, but let's go ahead and finish off by unloading our Nintendo Gallery figurines. Since we have a full camera and all. It also wouldn't be a bad time to stop in the shop ship, but I don't think we might wait on that. How many baits do we still have? We have three, six, nine, ten. And how many islands do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Okay. Not bad. Uh, so I don't even know that I will restock until after the island tour is over. Ah, uh, back to the Forest Haven. It feels like forever since we've been here, huh? So many island tour videos. But anyway, uh, let's see here. Let's fly on up. Well, let's just look at our pictographs. While I'm thinking about it. We have... Here's what we're turning in. We got loot. We got a Bacoblin. Cargo Rock. Sea Hat, Guyward, Salvatore, Ankle, Knuckle Jr., Tingle, Bomb Shoes, Mini Blin. By the way, the Bomb Shoe will actually turn into a rat figurine. Mini Blin, Salvage Core, and that's it. So, all photographs or pictographs that we've taken while on the island tour. Not a bad haul. That's also most of the great sea characters. So, yeah, uh,. I'm going to turn those in and I'll get back with you once they've all been made to figurines. And we're back and all our figurines should be ready. All 12 of them. Let's see what we got. Uh, shouldn't be anything new in the Forest Haven room or the Dragon Roost room. But there should be something new in the... a few new things in the dungeon room. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see, we got... Uh, 
Coblins. Oh, it's got all three varieties. It's got the Sea Bacoblin, uh, the Shield Bacoblin, and a uh, normal Bacoblin. Bacoblin. Habitat for Second Fortress. Spoils Joy Pendants. These little imps wield sharp machetes and buckle sticks when attacking. If they have no weapon, they'll attempt to fight hand to hand. Yeah, we already knew that. Thanks for the tip, though. Rats and bomb chews. Rat. Habitat for Second Fortress. Favorite food? All purpose bait. These creatures attack spontaneously and attempt to steal rupees. The ones that carry bombs around are apparently known as bomb chews. What a sneaky rat. I hate them. <laughs> Ooh, mini blends. So we see the four varieties here. Not that they behave any differently. Mini blend. Habitat for Second Fortress. Talent? Herd movements. I hate them. These little beasts are quick and agile. They scurry along walls and gather in great numbers. You should deal with them individually so they don't surround you. No, I don't think that's going to help. They will surround you. One way or another. Kargarok. Habitat for, se uh, for Second Fortress. Dragon Roost. Spoils Golden Feathers. These fierce and dangerous opponents often carry Bacoblins and Moblins into battle. You can use your grappling hook to steal the Golden Feathers. I think they're more effective than Bacoblins, at least. Ooh, a sea hat. Habitat the Great Sea. Weakness, projectiles. These tremendous flying fish can be found only... So they're a fish. Can be found only on the Great Sea. A large school of them will ram ships incessantly, trying to break them. So it is best to attack them from a distance. Yeah, that's for sure. At least it's not like in the old games where if they ran... Or the old version. If they rammed into you, uh... It would knock you out of your boat. So this is what a guy org looks like completely out of water. I'm not sure if we've seen that yet. Habitat the Great Sea. Weakness projectiles. These so-called ocean-killing machines are plentiful in the Great Sea. You should attack them with arrows or boomerangs before they begin relentlessly ramming your boat. And that is not necessarily a bad tip. So we, we've been torn to shreds by a guy org before. That's all the new ones in this room. And next, I think that we shouldn't have anything else in any of the other rooms except for the Great Sea Room. Shouldn't be anything in the Forsaken Fortress, Outset, Windfall, Great Sea. I'm looking over my list here just to make sure. Nope. Alright, Great Sea Room. We have... already had all these guys. Here we go. Salvage Court. Birthplace, Angular Isles. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what it's like to be born... Well, how would you be born on Angular Isles? Like, how did that work? I mean, we've been there in this video, so you know what island I'm talking about. Anyway, talent, searching for sunken treasure. So are these guys all brother... Oh, I never noticed this before, but you can totally see a tan line on their bodies. I've never noticed that. I wonder if that's a new thing to this edition. These young men found friendship through their common interest in searching for sunken treasure. So they were all born on Angular Isles, and yet they didn't know each other? They're just friends? They're not related? This is getting weird. Uh, these young men found friendship through their common interest in searching for sunken treasure. Soon afterward, they formed the Salvage Corp. With their first haul of treasure, all they could afford to buy was their diving suits. Now they dream of finding that one huge haul that will strike them, make them rich. They are currently searching for the legendary treasure sunken beneath the sea. Could they be looking for the Triumph Forks? Well, I guess we'll find out. Salvatore, who loves his life. Birthplace, Windfall Island. Talent, drawing pictures. Long ago, Salvatore hoped to be a famous painter. That dream didn't last long. He eventually returned to his hometown and came up with his current business plan. It's been a huge success, allowing him to purchase his own island, where he has opened up the second store in what he hopes will become a huge chain. He's now busy trying to think of that one big idea that will spark his next big endeavor. He sounds ambitious, but uh, what I want to know is how he manages to run both stores at the same time. Loot. Loot the Sailor. Birthplace, Windfall Island. His only fear, the Mermen. Loot spends his days working... So that's probably where the Prima Games Guide got the name Fishman. Loot spends his days working far from home at the boating course. He takes his earnings straight to the cafe bar in Windfall to enjoy a relaxing beverage. Good to know. Alright, you go. Oh, get off your stupid chair, you fat prick. Burp Tingle, birthplace unknown. Favorite things, fairies, deciphering maps. Ooh, he has a cobra on his back. That's interesting. It's been several years since Tingle first became enchanted with the Sovereign Maps in the hopes it would help him find fairies, and he's lost many things during that time. He's raising funds to begin his search for fairies, hoping to embark sometime in his 30s, while the lust of life is still upon him. At the age of 35, the pressure's on. Oh, he's lost many things. Like, what? Never mind, I don't want to know. God, I didn't think it was possible to look any gayer than Tingle. 
Ankle, bird place unknown. Favorite proverb, one may as well hang for a stolen sheep for a, as for a stolen lamb. Uh, not sure what that means, honestly. Since being taught how to decipher mass by his older brother Tingle, Ankle has been supporting his good-for-nothing twin brother, Knuckle. The only time he feels he can truly be himself is when he's tending to the Tingle Island Flower Garden. Poor Ankle. This guy just looks dejected, and understandably so. David Jr. Birthplace, Windfall Island. Occupation, Treasure Hunter. 17-year-old David Jr. set out to sea with dreams of finding the treasure of the ghost ship that his now-deceased father once saw. He gets seasick quite easily and was in just such a state when he awoke in a daze on Tingle Island. Ankle told him that self comes before wealth, and he's been working in the tower ever since. He really hates the uniform. Uh, wouldn't anybody? So he was looking for the ghost ship and he crashed on Tingle Island. Ah, uh, poor David. David Jr. really is like probably the most unfortunate Zelda character ever. If you think about it, he just has to live with Tingle and work with Tingle. Probably without pay. I can understand though, there's like up grass and big octos and everything around Tingle Island. But yeah, I uh, can't be sure, but that's probably all the time we have for this video. And real quick, I'll make a note. Um, next time, there's nothing new that we can do at Bomb Island or Eastern Triangle Island. So, uh, But there is something new that we can do at Fire Mountain. So we'll start the next video off there. Uh, while we're here, let's look at our bottles that we got. Pots, though. Hmm. I want to give it a yeah, but I feel like I shouldn't. Why did I forget to get the color picto box? Huh, yeah, you're not gonna be able to get anything from that, buddy. Ah, tingle bottles. What a lovely sight to see. Uh, uh, uh no. The eShop has been down since Christmas. When you received this letter, I only hope it has gone back up. Uh, well, I don't... I don't know. I think it is still down, last I heard. I don't know, I was on Miiverse, uh... A little while ago, but I don't I don't really need the e shot. Beetle is a cult blooded killer, I have the evidence. The skulls behind him, lol. Uh I don't see any skulls. I don't get it. Anyone else getting twenty thousand leagues into the sea vibes? I haven't seen that movie, sorry. Everything is alright here. Please help. This game is crazy, lol. Uh Boss door. Yep. Ah, That is cute, I guess. Okay, Sophie. You get a yeah. But yeah, let's, uh... I'm gonna start sailing to the north. But, like I said, guys, thanks for checking out uh, the Scott Spot. I will definitely catch up with you guys later.